written Erev Yantiv. The uh, Gemara that we uh, learned yesterday was uh, really a continuation of the uh, the day before, where we um, were learning all about the uh, different cases where you could uh, permit a sukkah that doesn't really have proper walls, and uh, and you also permit. Shabbos, the rules of Shabbos, because it's called a sukkah, it must be that it's considered a like a private domain. Uh, then the Gemara talked about the law of having shade, more shade than sun, and uh, the rule of having uh, uh, more shade than sun. If it has more sun than shade, it's puzzle, it's invalid. Does that apply to the walls of the sukkah, or does it only apply to the schach of the sukkah? So we brought an opinion, Rabbi Yishio, that says that even the walls have a law, have a rule, they're considered like a sukkah, even the walls, like the schach, they're, they're considered like the schach. And if so, they have the rules of the schach. And if they have the rules of the schach, uh, the walls, uh, you know, the walls of the uh of the sukkah also should be majority shade more than more than sun and that was the um uh this was the opinion of Rabbi Yoshia. and uh, yes, yeah. we we had also mentioned that the gemara yesterday uh really uh uh the, I'm sorry the gemara on the page before well, all does not fit like with Rabbi Yoshia cuz there it talked about a case of a sukkah that hardly had any walls, and yet was considered a kosher sukkah. Uh, I just uh, had little poles uh, surrounding the entire area. That was considered a uh, kosher sukkah. That's not uh, doesn't fit with Rav Yeshia. And um, um, uh, seemingly some of the Gemaras that we spoke about yesterday also probably won't fit with Rav Yeshia, uh, like Pase B. Royce. Uh, that would seemingly... Uh, not be a uh, kosher sukkah according to him, because how would you have Pasi B. Royce, which was the the frame, you have like little tiny L shapes of the in the corners of your sukkah, uh, and that's going to be a, 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 a you know a, 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 a kosher sukkah. Seemingly, the sh the sun is going to be uh, uh, getting through in major majority sunlight, so seemingly that might also not fit with uh, Rabbi Yoshia. In any event, Rabbi Yeshia has his view, and it's based on a pasuk. The pasuk has to do with the paroiches. He uses the word schach, and it talks about the paroiches. Now, we know the paroiches is what we call the curtain that covers over the ark in our shuls. In a shul, you call it a paroiches. But the word paroiches, um, the, the, uh, the, or at least the, 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 the original paroiches, is the paroiches that covered over the Holy of Holies. And that paroiches was sort of covering over the uh the ark in the in in the holy of holies the that that's where the ark was the ark was placed in the holy of holies the, and uh, the parechas was a curtain in front of it now the problem is why do we call it sakhisa the, the why does the hebrew in the in the, in the, in the, in the pasuk it uses the word vesakhisa it'll it'll sort of be like a a sukkah above it it'll be like schach above the Above the the ark, it's not, what do you mean? It's not above it. It's it's really uh, uh, a curtain next to it. It's 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 a nice honorable curtain that goes that's that's next to it, and it's not above it. Normally, schach. So uh, Rabbi Yosha used that as a source that it that that that's that 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 the 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 walls are considered also like schach. You have to they have to fall in, they fall into the uh, into the uh, category of of schach that it needs to be majority um, shade over sunlight. Of course, there's a discussion here if how far Rabbi Yoshia takes that. Like, according to Rabbi Yoshia, what what material can you use for the walls? Can you use for the walls um, materials that are uh, prohibited for schach? In other words, uh, what, are you, uh, what are you supposed to use for schach? For the roof of the sukkah, what's permitted to use for schach is the psilas goyrin v'yakim, it says, which is basically uh, uh, things from that are different vegetation. So we use uh, bamboo, uh, 
uh, that's the common thing to use bamboo mats or people use in Florida, they use uh, palm fronds. These are the, uh, uh, the leftovers from the, uh, what you, uh, what you cut off from the tree, you know, the, the, this is what's, what's used for skach. But for walls, you could use solid material, right? Now, can you use, can you, can, 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 like, uh, you know, many people use plastic and people use, uh, you could use metal for your walls of your sukkah, you, all different materials that would be permissible. Things that are macabre tuma, you could have nicely, um, um, decorated wood that, that could be considered makabal tumma could receive tumma that, that that would be acceptable for the walls you can't use it for the schach but you can use it for the walls um if it's something that's uh, like a finished product uh, that would be uh, acceptable for the wall that would review a hold that that's allowed uh for the walls uh or uh, would review say that uh no the walls have the same rules in everything as schach our Gemara says that Rabbi Yeshia, uh has the rules of um, uh, that the there has to be shade. That's that you know the, the the walls have to give more shade. So we take the law of schach regarding shade. The Gemara is vague; it does not clarify if the material for the for the walls also Rabbi Yeshia would be would be machmir about would hold that it needs to be. Um, it needs to be uh, uh, from the kosher material. Now, Taisvis interestingly says, uh, he says uh, an interesting point. He says, you know, we had a Gemara earlier. It said Sukhois, and uh, the, the Gemara Darshan, the Gemara used it to uh, expound on the fact that it uses the word Sukhois a number of times, and they're extra, and uh, sometimes it's... It, uh, it most of the time spelled it without the vavs, but one time it spells it with the vav, but it's pronounced with the vav. So we talked about the way do you expound on something the way it's pronounced or the way it's spelled. And um, the Gemara basically came up over there with this idea that you might learn how many walls you need from that, from those, from, from that word. That, in other words, that would be a source to learn about the walls. Now, what is the what what is the word that we're learning from? That the Gemara earlier said you learn it from the word sukais, which is means schach. So Taisus is sort of bothered with this uh, uh, the fact that you know our our walls of a sukkah are are based on the word uh, are based on the word schach. So the walls, even according to everyone, it seems like we follow this idea that schach that the walls are in a certain sense called considered schach. Um, and maybe why doesn't Rabbi Yishia learn from that? And um, um, and uh, uh, Tysus expl- Tysus answers that the, uh, uh, the 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 fact that we learn it from that extra word sukais, it it it's it's really not a source for scha that it's that it's considered that the walls are considered scha. Because that is just an extra word that teaches you about how many walls you need. If the Torah use an extra word, it doesn't take it, that you can't take it that far to say, oh, that the walls have the laws of schach. And Tais just proves it and he says, because for sure everyone agrees that you don't need to use kosher uh, schach for your walls. You know, so Tais just uses that as an extra, uh, extra proof that it can't be it must be it must be that the fact that you're learning from an extra word doesn't make it that you have to make it like similar to schach. you're learning that and how many walls does it need that the sukkah needs an extra it says it four times four walls three times three walls you know it, but it's not teaching you that it has the law of schach. you know you know you don't see it from there but he learns it from the uh, from the from the parochas that it uses the word schach there and the, the Gemara says, what do the rabbis do? And the rabbis learn that it's Nekav Bey Porta de Mechze Keschach. Now, this is a Pasuk. This Pasuk is Pesachoisa um, Al Ha'oroin. Where is this Pasuk? Shmois. Shmois. So the Pasuk in Shmois, in Chumash Shmois,
chapter 40, verse 3, the Samta Sham, you should place there the Arain, which is it means in the in the oil made in the holy of holies. And Vasakisa Al Ha'arain is And it should protect the Arain. The 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 uh the Paraiches will be a schach on the Arain. Now I mentioned yesterday that the simple reading of it is that it's more like it's a protection. It's 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 it doesn't mean schach like there's something that's a roof over it. It means the protection from the side. Now it, it really Rashi says that on chumsh. Rashi says it's a lashon hagana. Sakaisa means it's a it's a hagana. It's a protection because it's a machitza. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a divider. It's a curtain. It's not a it's not a tent. It's not something that's above it. It's a machitza. It's a room divider. It's a uh, it's a curtain that's dividing, that's uh, that's dividing the the holy of holies. But it's protection, um, you know, for the for the ark. It's uh, gonna like a protection for the ark, at least in an honorable way. It protects it, you know. Um, now, uh, our Gemara says that Rabbi Yishei learned it means that the walls of something are considered like schach. What do the rabbis do with it? So our Gemara says that they. Uh, that Argumar says the nake of they port it actually you learn that it has to actually be folded over on the top. You have to fold it over. It has to be a little like schach, similar to schach that it that it covers over. That in other words, not that the that the wall is called schach. That you do you, you have to. There's a mitzvah to to put a little of it. A little of it should cover over. Should be um, should be folded over, and that will be considered. The, that will be why it's called schach to teach you that that halacha. So. In, uh, 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 in other words, according to the Pute Shal Mikra, the simple reading of the of the Chumash, you could get away without even doing that. Seemingly, Rashi says it's a Lashon Hagana, but the Gemara Darshins, the Rabbis uh, Darshan, the Rabbis expound that it actually means you do have to you do have to bend it over a little. Nekaf Bei Porta. Then the Gemara went through a whole series of opinions as to holding about the 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 the, the concept of Sukkah is a Diras Keva. Sukkah is a, uh, a, a permanent dwelling. Uh, contrary to what we've been understanding until now, that a sukkah is a temporary dwelling. Here we've got uh, the, uh, uh, the different opinions, oh. a number of them, probably about 10 of them. We've got um, Rebbe, Rebbe Yoshia, Rebbe Yehuda, Rebbe Shimon, Rebbe Gamliel, Beishamai, Rebbe Eliezer, and Achedim. So it's eight. Eight rabbis hold that the sukkah needs to be a, or can be a diras kevak, a, a a permanent dwelling. And we went through the different names. We have Rebbe, who's uh, this opinion that it has to be a very big sukkah, according to him, Dalit al Dalit. That sort of fits with the concept of uh, uh, that has to be more similar to a house because we know that a house. The brother earlier talked about a mezuzah. In order to, to be obligated in a mezuzah, you need to have dalit al dalit. It has to be four cubits by four cubits, a room that has less than four cubits by four cubits and is not used to get into a room that it, you know, if it's not, if it's not a, a, um, an alley to get into a room or a corridor that's to get into a room that has four, four by four. Basically, a, a room less than four by four cubits is uh, exempt from a mezuzah. So that would be like the, what would be considered like a bias, a house. As a house less than four by four is not a house. So, so Rebbe seems to hold the sukkah has to be similar to a house in that sense that it's a, it's a the, that it's a, the size of it, and that would be like a diras keva. And then we had Rabbi Yishia, which was this opinion that the walls have to give shade, they have to give more shade. You can't have these flimsy walls. So, to some extent, he holds it to the diras keva. It's got to be like a, you know, like a, a permanent dwelling. Now, to some extent, again, not the, the opinions don't necessarily agree with each other. Rabbi Yoshia doesn't necessarily hold the sukkah needs to be dalit al dalit, four cubits by four cubits. Uh, he he holds something along the lines of this concept of permanence that there is. You see an element of permanence there that uh, you wouldn't live in a house that you have the sun coming through and uh, majority is sun. Uh, and uh, yeah, you know, so you you without shades, you know. So so he says such a sukkah wouldn't be uh wouldn't be Rabbi Yeshua holds that that wouldn't be a kosher sukkah. It has to be some more similar to the house with, with that with that you would have more shade than sun. Uh, then comes the uh, the next opinion, which was um, Rabbi Yehuda. 
in Rabbi Yehuda was the uh, based on our Mishnah. This was an interesting discussion. This is an interesting discussion because the the Mishnah, uh, our Mishnah said that Rabbi Yehuda holds a sukkah that's above twenty amos is considered a kosher sukkah, and we know that a sukkah above twenty amos is has to be made permanent. So. If it has to be made permanent, it means that Rabbi Yudah is of the opinion that the permanent sukkah is a, is a kosher sukkah. And uh, the thing is that Abaye had asked a question on, on, on uh, Rabbi Yehuda. And he said that um, the, uh, the Gemara, in the first page, it says... Um, That what's the reason why a sukkah uh, above 20 amis is not kosher, according to the rabbis? And the Gemara said, because it has to be a diras arai. And if it, you make it dira, uh, above 20 amis, it would need to be made in a uh, uh, like a diras keva. So Abaye asked a question on that. And he said, what do you mean? If you make it out of, uh, uh, you make it out of uh, iron, would that uh, ruin your sukkah, according to the rabbis? You know, you can't make it above 20 amois because it'd be considered like a, a permanent sukkah because it's so big, it's going to have to be permanent. What about if I made my sukkah small, but I made it out of iron? Would that be a, a problem? Uh, it's going to be permanent. I mean, that's a permanent sukkah. It's definitely built in a way of permanence. So that was a bias question. And... Um, Rava answered it afterwards. He said that it depends if it's a if it will it, it the size of it has to be a size that's a that's a temporary size. How you make it is no problem. But as long as the size is a temporary size, that would be a kosher sukkah. So a sukkah above 20 amis is not a temporary size, that's a permanent size. A size below 20 amis is a temporary size. And that they make it out of metal, it's okay, it's it's fine. It's, it's a temporary size. The size has to be. A temporary size. Now, Abaye's question implies that Abaye holds that um, Abaye says so. Uh, uh, a a a sukkah made out of iron is not a kosher sukkah. What does it imply? That the rabbis allow a permanent sukkah. That's what it sounds like because Abaye says. That uh, you think the argument between the rabbis and Rabbi Yehuda has to do with permanence or or temporary? How could you say that the rabbis would would, would have a problem with the with a sukkah that's uh, that that that's metal? That no, that can't be the issue here. It must be a different. The, the debate must be about something different. And there's no problem with having a permanent sukkah. So it sounds like, according to Abaye, that even the rabbis hold that a sukkah. Has, can be permanent. And Abaye here is telling us that Rabbi Yehuda holds that. Sounds like the rabbis disagree with it. Why is he only saying Rabbi Yehuda holds about a permanent sukkah and above 20 amis is a, is a, is a kosher sukkah, is a permanent, that, that's, that's acceptable because he allows permanent sukkah. Uh, the, the rabbis also hold the permanent sukkah as kosher, according to Abaye. The, the argument must be about one of the other explanations, you know, that the per person doesn't see. You know, we had uh, other interpretations over there. Um, that uh, has to be sell sukkah and not sell the fanois. You know, there were there were uh, other reasons explaining the uh, the argument, but uh, the opinion of the, the 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 final the, the opinion mentioned the the end over there was Rava's opinion, and that talked about the permanent. But the, according to according to Abaye, everyone seems to agree that permanent is 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 okay. So why does our Gemara, when Abaye mentions the names, he only mentions the uh, the names of uh, of Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda, and he doesn't mention the um, doesn't mention the rabbis. So Tysus asked this question. All the other commentaries ask this question. And one of the answers that they give. Uh, and the commentaries is that uh, uh, Abaye changed his mind. He says, you know what? You're right. Good answer. He liked Rava's answer. Rava's answer was that it has to do with the size of the sukkah being a permanent size. He says, you know what? 
he changed his mind. And that's why in our Gemara, he says, Reb, Reb Yehuda holds that for a permanent sukkah is a kosher sukkah. But the rabbis would argue with that. So that, that's one of the answers given. But Tesis doesn't mention that. Uh, Tesis has a, a different explanation. That uh, that really the source of Taisvitz, that the source of Abaye was not from our mission. So he has other sources that Rabbi Yehuda holds a Diras Keva. And um, and um, Uh, there's other so in other words the Mishnah is not really a proof because there might be other explanations to the Mishnah why Rabbi Yehuda holds that a sukkah is a kosher above 20 amis but uh, we see it from other sources they have other proofs on page 21 there's a uh, there's a proof that Rabbi Yehuda holds about the sukkah diras keva and uh, so that's why he's bringing from really really the the source is from a, a different a different source even though the Gemara brings the Rabbi Yehuda and the Mishnah but the 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 real source of Rabbi Yehuda holding about a diras keva is from another is from another uh, from another source, and that's why it's uh, it's mentioning Rabbi Yehuda, not the rabbis. Okay, and then we had the next case after we have Rabbi Yehuda was Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon was about having those four walls, and we we learned that that was had to do with that yeshem la mikra yeshem la masaydas that they were uh, right we. We learned about the fact that it says sukkos uh, four times or six times. Um, and uh, basically it says it three times, but one of them it says plural and they're all pronounced plural. So that could be considered six times or four times if you remember that Gemara. Then we have Ram Gamliel and uh, Ram Gamliel uh, had to do with this sukkah that's on top of this agola, the wagon. And this was a little... Uh, uh, issue and someone brought it up yesterday. Uh, we're talking about a a a, a wagon that's uh, uh, permanent, uh, that's uh, stationary, or is the wagon actually moving? And um, I mentioned that it sounds from Rashi that it actually was uh, at least the way I, I, I the, the simple reading of Rashi to me seemed like it's it's saying that it's even when it's stationary, it's because it moves, it would be a problem. And, um, uh, you know, you, you could maybe learn the other way in Rashi as well, could maybe learn that he, Taisvis uh, uh, actually doesn't, Taisvis brings out these two options. He says, uh, the, initially he understands it to mean that it's uh, talking about that it's stationary. And, um, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, he says that the, uh, the case of the, of, the, of the boat is stationary. And and yet the uh, the he says if we're talking about that they're moving, then um, um, uh, he says what is the why does the sukkah need a reason that it's going to fly off with the wind if it's moving that itself shows that it's that it's uh, temporary, the fact that it's while it's moving that itself would be temporary it must be that it's stationary and he says and therefore because it's stationary, he says. Um, uh, everyone agrees that on top of a agola is going to be kosher. On top of a uh, a wagon will be kosher. And he says you're actually not supposed to include the word agola in this brisa because um, the the Mishnah that mentions agola is doesn't mention the opinion of Rabbi Gamliel. It doesn't mention Rabbi Gamliel's opinion. That's uh, The the the, the, uh, uh, the the there's a Mishnah that mentions this about making a sukkah on top of a wagon or on top of a boat, and that Mishnah doesn't mention Rabbi Gamliel's opinion. The Brisa mentions Rabbi Gamliel's opinion. So when the Brisa he says you can't mention about the top of the of the uh, wagon because um, uh, the top of the wagon, uh, um, everyone would agree is a kosher sukkah. <laughs> That would be okay. It's the top of the boat that's a problem. But then he says that you could learn that maybe it's talking about that it's that it's actually moving. And if you learn that it's moving, you might be able to say that 
the boat needs a different reason. The boat reason why it's not kosher, according to Rabbi Gabriel, for a moving boat is not because it's temporary, because a boat is made because that's sort of like normal for, for, for a, uh, um, you could possibly say that, um, uh, he says, like he explains in Perak Yoshin, um, that, that you could explain that a boat is, um, it's, it's not as temporary when it moves around. A wagon would be considered temporary if it moves around. That would be a, a possibly a problem, according to Rabbi Gamliel. But uh, the boat, when it moves, it could be considered more uh, of more uh, uh, permanence, even even though it moves. And therefore, uh, you you could possibly learn that way. But he has a different problem learning that way. So Taisa seems to say that it's talking about stationary, and he says don't don't uh, include the wagon part in this uh, brisa. Okay, anyway, that's a discussion in the commentaries, and uh, that's where we got Leo. And then we have the opinion of Beishamai, and that was the opinion of um, uh, uh, that, that uh, sukkah needs to be a Zion, al Zion, seven hand breaths by seven hand breaths, and that sounds similar to more permanence, more comfort, similar to a house. And then we have Rabbi Eliezer, and Rabbi Eliezer uh, was of the opinion that a sukkah that's commensurif or some full of kaisel, we had these two um, two scenarios where it's like a uh, the word I used was a teepee. I don't know whatever some type of uh, like a dome shape almost like a or a uh, but anyway it, it doesn't have a roof and and or if it's like a srif is a just a um, uh, almost like a leaning a uh, bamboo mat against the wall so the walls and the and the roof are like the same. So in such a case, Rabbi Eliezer says that uh, these sukkahs would not be uh, would not be kosher. It's not uh, it's not like a house. It's not uh, you know it's not per it doesn't have permanence like a person. It's not proper to dwell in. A person wouldn't really be uh, it wouldn't be beautiful be beautiful enough to dwell in. And then we have a chayrim, which is uh, says about a sukkah made like a shayvach, which is a dovecoat that's uh, it's round and it's puzzle. It doesn't have corners. So it's not uh, the way, the normal way to dwell in such a in such a uh, um, uh, in such a uh, uh, structure would not be uh, uh, that wouldn't be like it wouldn't be like a normal normal dwelling. So it's not considered um, not considered kosher, and that would also prove that he holds a sukkah needs to be more like a permanent dweller. Okay, now we have Ra the next. Yes, sir. Ra Rabbi. Uh, yeah. There's a picture here of a dove coat. If you, if you want me to try to share the screen, uh, if it, you can do it in less than a minute, go for it. Let's try this. Um, Is that working? Yeah. Okay. Nice. <clears throat> so, what's the meaning of the picture? Where do the the, the doves they 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 fly on the outside? Not they don't go in it. Um. They yeah. I'm assuming. It? What? Looks like they're going on the outside. On the outside. Uh huh. So and and and. Uh, and these little uh, these little projections that they look like they right must, right they hang out over there. Uh huh. Yeah. And what are these little dots? They're all holes, like this air for, for the inside. Like, what do people do on the inside? That's how they feed them. What, what are they? They they. Why are there holes? Why? What? What's the meaning of it? I don't. I don't own birds. I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't I'm not. Sh I'm not uh -huh. sure. Uh huh. I don't know. What do pigeons do? No, just kidding. <laughs> right. All right. Anyway, uh, thank you, David, for the picture. You're yeah. Welcome. Um. So anyway, the person basically is dwelling in that you you know putting schach on top, I guess, but it's good. it's not uh, definitely a you know not a very comfortable uh, place to live. Now the question, of course, is how big is what how you know what is the size of that? That's another story. Uh, I don't know what the size of a dove coat is, but anyway, he says the problem is that it's round. Um, uh, so so uh, it, uh, so the next Gemara gets into now some calculations that uh, and I I think. Uh, 
uh, if you're not good at math, it could turn people off. So just uh, um, just stay tuned for some mathematics. I'm warning you in advance. It's a lot of uh, a deep, uh, so a lot of a lot of uh, geometry. Okay, so we've got the next Gemara here. Amar Rabbi Yechanan. Amar Rabbi Yechanan. We are on page seven uh, B. Page seven B. And we are eight lines up from the bottom of the page. Um, and if you have an art, we are on seven B three, seven B three. So the guard says, "I'm Rabbi Yechon. So you could keep showing. So that's made." Like a uh, like a furnace, and uh, this is also uh, some type of a. Um, they would burn stones or something to make some type of lime or. Anyway, so they would they would uh, dig a like some round type of a uh, a round uh, hole and make some type of a uh, oven there, or furnace. So the the law is that it's if it's made like a kivshon. So how big does it have to be to be a kosher sukkah? So the previous opinion, Reb Meir seemed to say that a round sukkah is never, a uh, cherem, Reb Meir held a round sukkah is never kosher. That's what it sounds like from the previous, uh, from the previous Gemara. And um, uh, Rashi spells that out. He says the kibshan sukkah, this sukkah that's made like a furnace, that's all round, and we're giving a measurement when it's kosher. Uh, so it means because the previous this opinion doesn't hold like the previous opinion. The previous opinion is that even no matter how big it is, it's not going to be a kosher sukkah. And uh, Rabbi Yechonon comes up with this measurement of how round, how much, what the size of the circumference has to be, because uh, basically, if it has a big enough uh, sukkah, it would be considered um, it would be considered kosher. Um, um, but there is another way of learning that, um, um, and that is that the previous Gemara said Shaiva, this Gemara says Kivsha. Why are they using different words? If the previous Gemara was saying round is puzzle, so it should just say round, it must be that the Shaiva, similar to the picture that David just showed us. It's specifically a small sukkah, but if it was much bigger, then you you could learn that that Achiram would agree. It's only when it's really small, like a shayvach, like a dovecote, that would be a problem. Now the problem is we don't know exactly what he's referring to. What what is the exact measurement that 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 is too small? But he says if it's like a shayvach, that would be too small, a dovecote. But uh, when you have a bigger, it could be that uh, they'll agree. And that's why Rabbi Yechonin gives a case of a kivshon. He gives a case of a shayvach. Because they're, they're talking about different different scenarios. Anyway, Rashi didn't seem to learn this way. Rashi seems to be uh, understand the mayor to be that anything round, according to Achirim, is not kosher. And that's why Rashi has to clarify and say, when you make it like a kivshon, he doesn't hold like Achirim, and meaning that there is an argument here. So Rashi seems to be pretty clear that there's an argument. Uh, but there is a, another interpretation over here that it could be that they agree, and the previous opinion was only when it's a small sukkah. So I'm just clarifying that. Now we'll get back to the Gemara. So Amar Rabbi Yechonon, sukkah asuya kikivshon, a sukkah that's made like a furnace, im yesh behekeifa k'dei leishiv esrim biyar ba b'neyadam. If it has in its circumference to 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 sit down, the size, it it, it can handle uh, the, uh, in other words, it's, it, it, it can it's it's big enough, it's large enough that 24 people could sit there by the circumference and they would fit, then it would be kshera. That would be kasher, vim lav, and if not, it would be too small and it would be sula, invalid. So the question is, who does this go like? Come on, who does this go like? So you have to you have to understand. We're dealing, we're gonna have to calculate now, first of all, how big how how big is a person? And we gotta calculate how big is this sukkah considered? Now, until now, we've all talked, we talked about square sukkahs. So we talked about seven by seven. That's a minimum size. We talked about Rebbe. Actually, we just had him again, where he, uh, uh, 
he says Dalid Amais, four cubits by four cubits. So he has a bigger measurement. But the point is that when you go to when you deal with a round sukkah, where do you, how do you measure it? How you know how how does how do, how does that work? So the Gemara here uh, tries to have different uh, try, tries different ways of measuring it. Like, do you need to fit a square inside the circle? Does the, the square outside the circle is that good enough? Whatever the square outside the circle would be, or does it have to be a square inside the circle, or is there just a measurement that you could use? So here the Gemara says, "Come on, who does this go like? Who, whose opinion is twenty-four people? It has to the circumference has to be the size of twenty-four people." So uh, the Gemara says, "Who's this like? Kerebi? Does this go like Rebbe? The Omar?" Um, uh, the Gemara says, "Come on, who does it go like?" Uh, so the Gemara sort of answers it says. Uh, Rebbe, let's say it goes like Rebbe. At least this is the try we're trying to make it fit with Rebbe. The Amar that says Kol Sukkah Shein Ba'ar Bamis Al Bamis Sula goes like Rebbe. That Rebbe holds because he's of course the biggest opinion that we know. So the Gemara says, um, there is a conversation called There are four corporations. Actually, Rashi. Uh, it says this is still part of the question. Kerebi, does this go like Rebbe? Damar kol sukkah shein ba arba arba isal arba amis psula that holds that a sukkah needs to be at least dalid four cubits by four cubits. So that it's uh, the gemara sort of like asking who, who who can this go like and could it be Rebbe? So the gemara says michti. Let's see. Gavra biamsi yosef. Every person is an ama. We know that from the shear of a mikvah, and the mikvah you have to how how big is a person? Uh, there's a ama. Al ama one by one, one one cubit by one cubit, and three ama is tall. So that's the size of a person. So we basically know that a person is approximately an ama. Now it could be that a mikvah is a little more loose. It gives a more uh, you know larger measurement because uh, yeah, you need to uh, bend into the mikvah. But uh, basically, uh, the gemara at this point says a person is an ama and kol. And the gemara says. Um, that if a person is an ama, so it means that it has to be the round part has to be twenty four amas, right? That that would be the circumference of the of this uh, sukkah would need to be twenty four amas according to this opinion. Again, it's we're talking about a, a, this a sukkah similar to a kivshon, similar to a furnace. It, it has to fit twenty four people sitting down, and seemingly that is the size of uh, twenty four amas, twenty four cubits, because each person is a, is an ama, and the gemara says now. Now, anything that has in the surrounding amount three hand breaths, so the diameter would be uh, a one tefach, one hand breath. It would have the width of a, of a tefach. The width uh, means a diameter. So uh, uh, the Gemara is saying that if you have a uh, hand breath as the diameter, that means the circumference would be three. Now we know that that's not so exact, really 3.14, and even that is not so exact, right? But um, but the Gemara is uh, is not dealing with tiny fractions here, and the Gemara is just giving a general, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, just estimating, a general estimate that it's three, you know, uh, the diameter is one tefach, the circumference would be three. So, so the Gemara says that according to um, Rebbe, how big would a round sukkah need to be? According to Rebbe, uh, the, the Rebbe holds you need to have um, um, a four dalit al dalit, four by four. That means that the diameter would be four, um, would be four, a, a, a Rebbe's square sukkah would have a diameter of Four so amas. The square root of two, which is about five point six. Okay, you're, you're going a little, a, a, a little uh, um, faster than we're up to. That's a the Gemara will mention that number soon. But let's let's just let's stick with this. The Gemara says betrays our sagi. This should be enough. Twelve people. Yeah. Why? Because if you have mm -hmm. a four cubic uh -huh. diameter. You multiply that by three. Uh -huh. that would be Twelve. 
that would mean that a twelve that twelve people would be enough to be a, a sukkah that could handle twelve people sitting down would be enough according to Rebbe. Okay. And why are we saying twenty four? So the Gemara now says, and now we turn the page. Hanimili beigula, yeah. Uh, this that we say that when you that, that the uh, that you can do three times the diameter, that's a circle, but uh, th that that works for a circle. Aval beribua boitve for a square. Rebbe holds you need a square dalit al dalit. You need a four by four cubits uh, for a sukkah. So you would need more of a diameter, a more of a um, um, periphery, perimeter. You need more of a perimeter for uh, uh, to go around. So therefore, um, the calculation is off. So the Gemara says, Michti, let's see. Kama meruba yoiser al ho'igol. How much is a square the perimeter of a square more than a circumference of a circle. Uh, the perimeter of a square is one quarter more. That doesn't re really mean one quarter, means one third, which ultimately added together will be one quarter. And that's uh, generally in, in, the, in the Gemara, it often uses a fraction one um, more than one at what, what the, than the one that you would calculate with. So for example, uh, in this scenario, a uh, a square that's four by four. What is the perim perimeter of the square? The perimeter of a square four by four is four plus four plus four plus four would be sixteen cubits. Now um, uh, the circle that's inside that square was twelve. That's what we calculated. So in other words, if you have a diameter of four and you make a circle around it. Or if you have a diameter of four and you make a square around it, there's going to be a difference there of the size of the circle versus the square. The square is going to be 16 cubits because we know the, the diameter is four. So you just multiply it by four. Four sides is that same size, 16. And by a circle, we just calculated, which is basically uh, um, the three times the, di the, di the, the diameter uh, for a circle would be 12. So the difference between 12 and 16 is uh, what the Gemara calls a quarter. In other words, once you add that extra uh, third of 12, it equals a quarter of the final number, 16. A quarter of the final number, 16, was four. And that was, you have to add a quarter on to 12, and you get the, uh, the, um, the size of a square. So the Gemara now says that if you... Um, According to Rebbe, um, that you need 16, um, you basically need the size of 16 uh, people. Um, uh, that would be the size of the circle that you would need, would be the size of, of 16. So the Gemara says, Vishitz are sagi. So you should have enough if, if it was 16, not, um, not 24. So uh, this is. Um, Again, let me let me read the last line. Michti, Hama Meruba Yoiser Ala Ego revealed. So the Gemara says, if it's how much more do you need for the square than the circle? It's a quarter more, which ultimately means you need 16 cubits to be the, the perimeter of the square. So if so, how many people would you need um, to be on a circle that's the same size as that square? You would seemingly need. 16 people, because each person is an ama, is a cubit. So you would need a circle of 16, not to a circle of 24 people. So Beshitz or Sagi with 16 people should be enough to have that type of circle, because then we'll say that that's the same size as Rebbe holds. That would be similar to a square uh, uh, sukkah that's four cubits by four cubits. So the Gemara says, no, there's a problem. Hani Mili. The eagle the nafik migoy ribua. This applies that um, this number sixteen, which your calculation that you just calculated, that would be a circle that's inside a square. Aval, but 
we need the corners areas. If you put a circle inside a square, and Rebbe holds you need a square four by four, and now you're going to give me a circle that's inside the square, and that circle um, that's inside, you know, in that scenario uh, where you have the, the circle inside the square, uh, that circle would be... Um, um, missing the corners. And uh, in order to um, fulfill Rebbe's rule, you need a circle around the square. You have to fit a square in the circle. So the Gemara says, That would be a circle that's inside the square. But if you have a square that is inside the circle, but Misham Morsha the Karnasa because of the corners, because of the uh, sticking out of the corners, you would need more than that calculation. So the Gemara says, okay, fine. So let's see how much you would need. And here we have uh, Ezra's calculation. So the Gemara says, Mirti, Kol Amsa Biribua, Amsa Utre Chumsha Balachsena. So when you have a square, what is the size of the diagonal? What, what's the, uh, which, which, when you have a square, what would be that diagonal um, um, size? The 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 uh, from from one corner to the opposite uh, to the diagonal corner. What would be the size of that? It's much bigger than uh, here. We have a four cubit by four cubit box. So when you take a diagonal, uh, the diagonal line. What is that line called? In a box, if you make a diagonal, is there a term for it? Hypotenuse. What was it? The hypotenuse. It's hypotenuse. The hypotenuse of the of the square. Thank you, Ezra. The hypotenuse of the square is um is is how much? So it says it's an ama utre chumsha. It's one and two fifths, which in decimals would be one and one point four. Um, one point four. One four tenths. Two fifths would be the same as four tenths. So one point four. So um, if you the, the, so when you have a square that's four amois, four cubits, the hypotenuse would be um, one point four times four, right? What's one point four times four? Would be five point six, right? Five point six, I believe. Yeah. So five point yeah. six would be the size of the diagonal. So five point six. Um, um, then multiply that by three because that's the that's because you're making a circle around the square. So if you're putting a circle around that, so that would be at, that hypotenuse is basically the diameter of the circle. The hypotenuse of the square is the diameter of the circle because you're making a circle around the square. So now the two corners, those that that, that hypotenuse uh, the line goes straight through the middle. That's a diameter of the circle. And so you multiply that by three. So what is 5.6 multiplied by three? So the Gemara says, the Shivsar Naki Chumshe Sagya. So 5.6 multiplied by three. I don't have my calculator open. It will be uh, approximately 17. Yeah, one second. 5.6 multiplied by three equals 16.8. Yeah, 16.8. Okay. Now 16.8, another way of saying that is eight tenths is the same as saying uh, four fifths, right? So it's 16 in four fifths, or the Gemara uses the term 17 minus a fifth, which basically is 16.8. So if we want to use decimals, 16.8. But 16.8 is the same as saying 16 and four fifths, and the Gemara's term is 17 minus a fifth. The shifts are naki chumsha, chumshi sagya. So all you need is a circle that's minus one fifth, uh, 17 minus a fifth, 16 and four fifths, that would be enough for your for your sukkah. So again, what we've calculated here is, uh, I mean, in a certain sense, it's a brilliant uh, calculations that we're going through in uh, five minutes. The, uh, how, to, how to calculate Rebbe's, Rebbe's sukkah. Rebbe has a four uh, cubit sukkah, and the uh, Rebbe, but you want to have a round sukkah. So your round sukkah, how big does the round have to be? So we've just we've just calculated that it's 17 minus a fifth, 17 cubits minus a fifth. You could fit a square in that sukkah, a square of four cubits by four cubits. 
So the problem is that our Gemara, the Rav Yechanan said the number was 24 people have to be, it has to be a circumference of 24. We just calculated that it's a little less than 17. So the number is not exact. So the Gemara says, Loi Duck. No, we weren't so, the Gemara, Rabbi Yechanan wasn't so exact. So the Gemara says, Amar, I mean, Loi Duck, or Duck. You can say he wasn't so exact and a little. Tuva me amrina like duck. Would you say that on a lot? Such a big difference. Uh, the difference between 17 minus of 16 and, and uh, 16.8 to 24 is a big difference. You know, we're not dealing with millions over here. We're dealing, you know, we're dealing in uh, small numbers. So, you know, it's a big difference between 17 and uh, 24. It's not like one or two, you know, one or two numbers off. This is a, a substantial amount of, relative to the numbers you're dealing with. So the Gemara says, um, uh, that we have to come up with another explanation. So the, the Gemara's explanation now is Amalei Mark Shisha Breed Rav Chizdal Rav Ashi Mi Savras Gavra Ba'amsa Yosef Do you really think a person sits uh, in, a, in a full ama like we said from a mikvah? It could be that a person really takes up a little less less space than a full ama. Even though for a mikvah we calculate an ama that has to do with also uh, a, a dunking and so on. But for actual size of a person, maybe he's less than an am. So really, a person is plusa gavri betarti amsi yosvi. Three people sit in two amas, which means that every person is two thirds of a cubit. And if you add two thirds plus two thirds plus two thirds of three people, you get six thirds, uh, which equals two. So in other words, every person is two thirds of an am. And that's the calculation here: is that if a, if a, a person uh, uh, three people sit in two amas. It basically means every person is the size of two thirds of a cubit. Rebbe, yeah. what is the, what is the definition of yosef? Gavra ba'amsa yosef. I'm trying to think out what the, I was thinking of it. As long it's enough room for you, you can stretch out a little bit. You can move around a little bit. That's your space. Mm -hmm. Meaning not just the amount of space your body takes, but also your reach. You can Hold get on. up and stretch. Yeah, Isaac, I'm going to give you an example, okay? Take your arm, okay? Bend it at the, at the, uh, at the elbow, and then put it across your body. That's how big you are. That's one ama. Right, right. Okay. And you don't, you're not stre you're not stretching. You're not doing anything special. If you're stretching, you're taking more than an ama altogether. Nice. All right. Thank you. So uh, uh, Isaac was wondering more why it says Yosef and not Stan. Does that answer, Ezra? Does that answer the question why it doesn't say a person stands in one ama and not sit instead of sits? Would that answer it? What you what you explained? Well, I mean, I mean, he's he's sitting. I'm sitting. You're sitting. All you have to do is put your arm across your 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 right. your. That's that's an ama. Right. Good and that's point. Basically, the entire you know. But if you if you stretch out, you're going to end up taking more than an ama. So. so you you know, right. If you're saying no, it's two-thirds ama, then it probably means that he, yeah. he, he can't be sitting. I'm just wondering if when you're sitting, your weight pushes down on your stomach and you get fat, you get wider a little. Okay. And maybe that's why it says sitting. I'm just I'm just guessing that maybe if you stand, so you're maybe you're 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 a little less uh sure, less, uh, less wide. Uh, that, that's my thought to answer your question, Isaac. So anyway, so we're stuck here with this calculation of 24, and we calculated only 16.8. So we came up with a new idea that maybe a person only sits at two-thirds of an ama. Uh, two-thirds, uh, if a person is uh, size is only two-thirds of an ama, and which which uh, uh, I guess if you uh, uh, thinking of Ezra's uh, calculation, which is... Uh, I guess a foot, know, one foot. If an arm is eighteen inches, right? But my arm, my stomach, and I'm not, I'm not that fat. My stomach is pretty. I don't know if I could say that I'm two thirds of my hand, but uh, my goal is to fit within the arm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
that. So I'm I'm trying my to my weight goal. In other words, think, like I would think that the like if you excluded your your hands from it, maybe that should be the uh, you know that would be like the uh, uh, two thirds. I'm not sure how he's calculating this unless people were thinner in those days. But anyway, people, he's, people were much smaller. Well, much smaller because they don't eat three. They didn't eat three meals a day, and the old they weren't as tall either. Uh huh. They walked, but but okay. even but even so, the situation would be even worse. With the small, with this, you know, with two thirds as opposed to one, because if you based your calculations on one and you found that you needed sixteen point eight uh, people, then based on two thirds is going to be two thirds that size. Yeah, but see, the opposite. We're learning. We're going to pick his number that he said you need twenty four people, and if you needed twenty four people. And now we say, well, 24 people is not 24 amas. It's really two thirds of an ama each one. So now it's 24 times two thirds, which is uh, 24 times uh, uh, 6.66, right? Well, is that, is that right? 24 times what? It's sorry, it's 16. 16. 0.66 equals three eighths yeah, of 24. Equals, around 16. So it's much closer. So this is more or less the uh, what what he's what he's getting at. That's closer to that's gonna it's gonna work out better. Uh, where are we yeah, up to but, over here? But Rabbi, you made your your initial calculation based on one ama, and you got well, sixteen point. You got sixteen point eight. Right. In other words, that's what you need, and this is what Rabbi Yechonon says. So we got the, yeah, the amount but, that you need. And, oh, yeah. But you see, if you're going to use two thirds to def, to to try and reduce the twenty four to sixteen. Then you need to use two thirds also in the initial calculation for uh, that got you the sixteen point eight. Because no, I don't think so. I'll tell you why. There. You use there one we there. Right, but there we were not calculating based on the size of a human. There, a uh, human body. There we were calculating based on Rebbe's opinion that you need for. We, we calculated that size based on the fact that you need four cubit by four cubit sukkah, which we then calculated the circle uh, around it, the, 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 that it's uh, six, a, 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 uh, right, the hypotenuse would be 5.6. Okay. Then we calculated, uh, that had nothing to do with a person size. We're just talking about amas that Rebbe says you need four amas. So we got 5.6, yeah. the hypotenuse. Then we got the circle 5.6 yeah. times times 16. three. 8. So 16.8. And that has nothing. We still have nothing to do with that. That number has nothing to do with the size of a human. Uh, in other words, okay. it, it does. It has to do with the cubit from, from here to here, but not two third. The two third number, the size of a human body doesn't have to do with it. It has to do with the uh, the uh, the cubit. So, okay. um, all right. You know, we're going to have to stop here. I want to wish all of you a Kabbalah Satayra B'Simcha B'Pnimius. You should receive Amen. the Torah with joy and have a real happy and joyous uh, Shavuos. Amen. I look forward to learning Amen. with you afterwards. Thank you, thank you, thank Rabbi. you Rabbi. Good job to Thank you, Rebbe. Thank, thank you. Bye, you all. Have a great Yom Tov. You too. Everybody have a great Yom Tov. Bye-bye.